thank you all for great papers. Uh, so we open for questions. Yes, please. Yes, uh, thank you very much for your papers. Uh, this, uh, is it on? No. no. And uh, Ranan and I, my, my question is, what was the motivation of Peronism to um, stage such a, a liberal mm. program of the inclusion of ethnic mi majorities? In your opinion, what did it have to do with the broader global context of the age and, and, and also the role of the US, you mentioned it in passing? What, what, what connection was there? And um, um, Atalia, my question, is, this is what was also a fascinating story. Um, have, you, have you ever thought about uh, the new spaces that have sprung up lately, you know, in terms of virtual space that um, makes easier communication between um, the migrants' communities in Costa Rica and their their hometowns. That, does that play any any role? And and the second one, and what what what, what did the Costa Ricans have to say uh, to the Americans? Uh, what 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 was the Tico stance on having these you know utopian-minded <laughs> Yankees around them? Yeah. Thanks. Maybe we should gather. Uh, do you want yeah. any any more questions? Hello. Hello. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, I have quick uh, comments uh, to Ranan and Aya. Something that uh, it might sound funny when I was listening to you in Spanish uh, quoting Perón, dividing the world into hombres buenos y hombres malos, it remind me of Trump in the campaign regarding the Mexicans. Mm. So maybe there, there might be something behind the, okay. right? Uh, and similar to what uh, Stefan was saying, is, is there anything related to uh, uh, Peron's foreign policy in its approach to, to com uh, migrants, and in that sense whether, and this is for you, Anaya, Anaya especially, whether there's something peculiar about the Japanese case, unlike the, the, the Jews, the Israelitas, <laughs> and the, and the uh, Arabs. Uh, to uh, Maria Lucinda, uh, my, my question is, so you, you, you told us a, a, a lot about, by, by the way, I think your, yours is the only paper that it's from Latin America and, don't, and not to Latin America, mm. which is the title of the conference, cool. right? <laughs> but is there something peculiar Brazilian or, or whether your study of immigrants right in Lisbon, which is a, I was there last week, nothing to compare with LA, it's lovely, yeah. right? <laughs> it's the opposite, but whether there is something peculiar Brazilian or whether you could make, you could uh, give the same talk and talk about uh, migrants, uh, I don't know, from, mm. uh, from other places, right? From, mm. from Africa, from Asia. And, 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 and finally, to, to tell you a similar question regarding Costa Rica, and you, know, you are an expert in Costa Rica also, and I can understand, I was in Costa Rica twice, it's an incredible country in Latin American terms, but the question is, you say that the US, I would not say never the Americans, right? The US, they were talking about uh, it's cheap, it's peaceful, it's beautiful. It might have something to do with the political regime, mm -hmm. that yeah. it's a democracy, and whether it's the only case in Latin America or there might be other candidates for that. Thanks. Maybe uh, I will add the question. I mean, it came from you, paper talking about the women, the role of women, and I, I was thinking to ask, you know, all of you, like Aya and, 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 and Lucinda also about, about like about space and women and about Japanese women, studying Japanese women. So, so w what was the role of Japanese women thinking about? I mean, I don't know much about Okin women or people from Okinawa, which is a different community, but, but I would be interested to hear if there is anything to say about like the gender uh, thing, perspective. Yeah. Um, yes, I have a question uh, for uh, Ranan and Aya. Um, you mentioned that um, this was an effort to include previously excluded groups and not only the working class, but also migrant communities. So my question is, was this presented as something different or was it any kind of overlap between the, the workers' identity or working class identity that Peron was promoting and the migrants? Um, or was it 
different? Also, were these communities part of the workers or or or, or a different group that that was yeah not not uh, could not be included into it? Yeah. So yeah, go yeah. ahead. <laughs> uh, there's a, there's certainly a major change in. Uh, uh, government attitudes towards different uh, uh, social and ethnic groups uh, uh, in, in the late 1940s and early uh, 1950s. When Perón talked about hombres buenos y hombres malos, basically, oh. when Perón talked about uh, hombres uh, buenos y hombres malos, he basically said uh, peronistas y gorillas. Los que, uh, those who are in favor of us and those who are uh, against us. This was the uh, division. And in some way, the easiest uh, uh, answer to several of the questions is to say that as long as you were a Peronist, Peron couldn't care less whether you were of one origin or another, or one political background or another, whether you were a communist before you joined Peronism, a socialist, an anarchist, a conservative, a Catholic, eh, 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 etc., etc. Eh, so that's, <laughs> that's one um, simple uh, uh, um, answer, but there is a, certainly a change. Uh, uh, Peronism tries to present itself as the defender of all weak uh, 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 groups, all those who have been marginalized for one reason uh, or another uh, uh, from the uh, political uh, uh, process. Was it, uh, were they a part of the workers? No, not at all. But they were, they formed part of his vision of uh, organized community. So, as Exactly like you had the Sechet, uh, Sechet, U, and I could continue on and on, on for different groups of students, professionals, uh, workers, uh, etc. You also had the uh, Organización Israelita Argentina, the Asociación Japonesa, uh, etc., etc. The idea was to, uh, in a way, create an organic society which would give voice and allow a more active participation for a, a larger number of people, uh, challenging the traditional liberal uh, uh, representative uh, democracy. Um, and uh, uh, it's a rather swift change because I, I was quoting from Peron in the mid 40s to late 40s talking about Argentina as a Catholic country. We were a, 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 an Argentine home is a Christian home, so there's no place to uh, uh, non-Christian uh, uh, Japanese or non-Christian Arabs, and certainly not for uh, for Jews. But then there's a change. There's a change and a major change, and you can see it uh, in all aspects of of, of life. Uh, change in uh, 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 migration policies, change in cultural policies. Uh, change in, in, in school textbooks. Uh, uh, again, if the uh, 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 textbooks of the uh, mid to late 40s uh, highlighted the uh, Catholic nature of uh, Argentina, in the 50s you, you have a, a textbook for second graders, uh, which includes a, a, a dialogue between uh, Beatrice and Esther. Beatrice is Catholic, Esther is uh, Jewish. And when Esther says that tomorrow I will have to miss school because we have a, a Jewish holiday, the answer of Beatrice is, of course, en la nueva Argentina de Perón y Evita, todos somos iguales, cada uno tiene su religión, etc., etc. So uh, it's a noticeable uh, change and uh, it has to do in part with a challenge to traditional representative uh, uh, democracy as far as uh, uh, I'm concerned when talking about the uh, organized uh, uh, community. It certainly had to do with foreign uh, policy and foreign relations, especially as uh, uh, Peronist Argentina gives for the first time legitimation of dual or double uh, uh, identities. Uh, for the first time uh, in Argentine history, it's perfectly legitimate to maintain your ethnic identity alongside your national identity as uh, Argentine. And therefore, you see that the first ambassador that 
Peron sends to the newly created state of Israel is a Jewish Argentine. The first ambassadors he sends to Syria and Lebanon as newly established republics are Argentines of uh, Syrian Lebanese uh, uh, origins. Uh, the brother of Angel uh, Gashu is sent to the uh, Argentine embassy in Japan. Uh, he tries to take advantage or capitalize on the fact that Argentina is a multicultural a, a, a country and send these people to different embassies. The, Amer the U.S. Americans, as you said, uh, Arye, the U.S. Americans avoided sending a Jewish American ambassador to Israel for very many years, lest he might be considered as having a dual loyalty mm -hmm. to the U.S. on the one hand and to his uh, ethnic uh, home country, uh, Israel, uh, uh, on the other side. So it had an impact on on, on, on foreign relations, uh, uh, undoubtedly. And in the case of Japan, it did allow uh, Peron to challenge uh, the Americans, or at least create the image that he was challenging uh, uh, the Americans, uh, although in more substantial issues, he aligned himself to US uh, policy. Okay, your question about the uh, overall, maybe over, overall Japanese uh, community. And I think that, first of all, I should mention that the Japanese community is far less under, is underrepresented than any other, like Jewish or other ethnic groups. And actually, um, we found almost no researches on political activities of Japanese community. And it, that is, uh, on one hand, it, it is true that the Japanese community was not so um, positive in political, political activities because we heard so many testimonies like los japoneses son reservados and so, so <laughs> that's, that's they, they say like the, the their own character or nature is the result um, is resulting on in that um, negative attitude toward the political political issues and but on, on the other another side maybe um, the political issues are not 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 so much focused on the so far the the researches so far, and also uh, about the Japanese women and gender gender issue. I actually is it would be our next project, maybe next article on the female side of the Japanese community because. Um, the female side of Japanese community also is really underrepresented, and uh, there are so less, much less um, researches on uh, female female things. And I, th I think uh, you you saw the picture of AJA uh, AJA led. Of course, the the, the all, all of the members are, are males. And of course, and Japan was at, at that time in uh, really the sexual gender division was really str much stronger. And I saw one one image, one old image of Japanese Japanese woman like in in Argentina, um, uh, we, we, we're wearing wearing a, like uh, Occidental or Western Western uh, clothes. And when she go went back to Japan. She went back to Japanese old style costume, and so in the, in that, yes, it's it's really interesting that to how to change and tran transfer their own identity of women, women or female identity, and it would would be our next project maybe. Great. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Looking forward. Um, thank you very much for uh, for your question. Um, well, uh, in fact, uh, what um, uh, we would like um, to illustrate uh, with this more empirical analysis focus on migrants um, is to um, uh, criticize uh, a little bit and try to confirm it if it was true or not, the idea of special integration related to 
uh, special integration uh, or, or dispersal and um, show that the process of um, um, the spatial integration uh, is not uh, different uh, from uh, migrants uh, or any other uh, citizen. So that's why uh, the most important uh, element is to look at this uh, process of um, uh, promoting uh, uh, information in order to provide equal opportunities for access to all the urban resources. So the first idea is to challenge the, this um, um, process of integration related with the confinement uh, or not of um, special practices in a specific area. Um, because um, when um, we identify special integration um, as the opposite of concentration in a neighborhood, and for instance in a housing policies, uh, we try to uh, promote um, mixed uh, neighborhoods. This doesn't mean that um, people uh, interact uh, more because they they can have their special practices and social relations completely uh, in uh, very diverse uh, spaces and don't interact uh, with um, their uh, their neighbors. So and of course this happens uh, with the Brazilians in uh, Lisbon and uh, with the Brazilians uh, in um, uh, in Los Angeles uh, or uh, in in other city. So you are absolutely right that and uh, in Lisbon we have looked at um, other migrant groups and um, uh, in fact the, um, there is a similarity of, uh, of processes. So um, it doesn't make um, uh, sense uh, to look uh, at uh, migrants or uh, from different um, ethnic backgrounds or religions and so on as different uh, human uh, beings. The processes are, are similar uh, in, um, and we need to create uh, infrastructures at the city level uh, in order to promote this uh, access to, to, the, um, to the resources and um, uh, this is um, um, the place of residence is not the most uh, important uh, um, element because people must be dispersed without uh, having any kind uh, of relation and uh, it happens in gentrified neighborhoods and it happens uh, in um, poor neighborhoods um, uh, as well. Regarding um, gender, uh, uh, in fact, it's a very important element and particularly in the case of um, Brazilian migrants in Lisbon because it's a very feminized um, uh, migrant group like uh, in other cases of uh, Latin American um, migrants. And this is uh, important because um, for, um, traditionally we have this idea that um, mostly um, migration is um, um, is derived uh, by economic reasons, and in some cases it isn't. Uh, it's not the case, and particularly in the case of women, because uh, migration um, is the way to um, uh, to to move uh, and uh, to um, it's motivated by gender discrimination. Um, so the um, patriarchal societies and uh, uh, have more freedom uh, in different uh, spaces. So there are uh, many other uh, elements, and in this respect, migration is um, an opportunity uh, to. Uh, to have uh, different special practices um, um, than uh, they couldn't have had in their uh, home countries and it's uh, clear in uh, many of the narratives that I didn't have the time to elaborate. Of course, class is also a very important element, so we should consider intersectionality. Thank you. Hi. 
<clears throat> Thank you for all your questions. Uh, Stefan, regarding social networks, no doubt it's the most important uh, phenomenon today. Uh, unfortunately or fortunately, my uh, research ends at the late 1970s. So social networks was not relevant uh, in those days. Uh, luckily for me, they wrote letters, they wrote memoirs. Uh, I'm sure that now, you know, it changed completely the time, uh, the time uh, concept, the concepts of time and space. And you can see it, for example, in Sheila Kutcher's uh, research about US uh, Americans in Mexico, who actually lived uh, on both places it doesn't matter if they live in Mexico or in the States. Though in a third, uh, what uh, Homi Baba th called third space, it's a third space for them. So, uh, regarding the Costa Rican uh, reaction, uh, I didn't get to it because of the time constraints, but it seems like uh, Costa Rica was an open stage for US Americans to fulfill their fantasies and stuff, but Costa Rica had its own fantasies. Uh, and the US Americans were meaningful for these fantasies as well. Uh, Costa Rica, since the 19th century, saw itself as the Switzerland of uh, Central America and the white legend and blah, blah, and it was, of course, reputed by Costa Rican, both Costa Ricans and US historians like Lara Pat Vietnam and, uh, and others, um, but uh, in this respect, and you know, and in the context of migration in Latin America, when the, where all countries, or especially some countries, perceived themselves, okay, there were the countries like Brazil and Cuba who thought of themselves as a racial uh, equality, and there were countries like uh, Uruguay and others, and Costa Rica, who saw themselves as white countries. So in this respect, the immigration of US Americans, and Costa Rica did not receive a large amount of European migration. So the uh, immigration, uh, as uh, nonetheless uh, small and uh, really frictions of it, of US Americans was perceived both as a means to whiten the country and as a proof as of its whiteness. I mean, if US Americans arrived here, it means we are white, we are progressive, we are modern, and there was a huge uh, admiration for the United States in Costa Rica, for example, in the 1936 uh, visit of Kennedy that I uh, uh, mentioned, there was a candy mania. At the, in San Jose. It was a, a, such a celebration, it was a, international, it was a national holiday, mm -hmm. and people stayed out of his hotel mm -hmm. all night long shouting Kennedy, Kennedy, uh, and all that. And for example, even, and even when there were scandals, like uh, Robert Vasco scandal, Robert Vasco was a US businessman who uh, corrupted one, who got a silum, uh, got uh, political asylum in Costa Rica by Jose Figueras, and was a, a very corrupted uh, business. No one talked about him as US American. He was uh, defined in uh, Costa Rican press as foreign millionaire. And the humiliation was for, for the uh, Costa Rican government for accepting him, not for the US. And you can see in the US uh, press, for example, the Tico Times, they were like, they couldn't believe, they say, oh, he's a, it's a disgrace and everything, but it was uh, uh, inter American, inter US American discourse. Costa Rica, uh, the, the rejection or the resistance to U.S. Uh, Americans on the individual level uh, became during the 1970s and 80s because of massive land purchasing. And, you know, I've started my, uh, my project when I visited Costa Rica and I saw the... Um, the signs all over, Savenda, Savenda, Savenda. So the country is being sold to US Americans. So the resistance is right on the individual level. Uh, Arya, always the political uh, regimes. Yes, of course, you know, uh, Costa Rica formed part of what uh, Greg Grandin had uh, described the imperial workshop of the US in Latin America. So, of course, there were power relations that I was talking about power relations on the very micro level, but they were part of the macro level as well. And uh, thank you so much for your questions about, question about gender. Uh, and I put again this slide because uh, you can see the importance of gender on both ways. First, in the construction of individual uh, identities of women, to what extent they perceived of themselves as agents of the empire, but you can also see the gendered aspect of the US empire. I mean, how it works with gender, and not only through ma maleness, but also through women. Yeah. And you can see here, so on 
here is a uh, book of recipes because this was the image. As a bunch of uh, old, old lady all the time gossip and talking about cooking, but they saw themselves as, put, as important ambassadors. I mean, they had a role in, in Costa Rica. Uh, so I think it's very, very important to look at women and regarding space, there's a word that I really like and I, s I apologize for my uh, Spanish accent, it's called querencia, it's like home, uh, longing for home, Rosalie, am I correct? But in the, in the jargon of the bullfighting, it's the places in the arena that the bull feels safe and such a women's club was was a currency. This is where they felt safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we'll end here. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much, all of you, for great papers, and thank you all.